I'm basically a, an engineer by training and uh, I've had a career of delivering infrastructure projects all over the world and I then moved into planning because I thought the infrastructure projects we were building were not really delivering a very sustainable world, they were delivering a very unsustainable world. And having spent eight years in planning and uh, in Arup, running Arup's planning business all over the world, I realised that most countries could see there was a more sustainable way of organising life and people living, but they weren't able to deliver it. So I decided just a year ago to give up my planning role in Arup and actually establish a charity to step into the middle of the position uh, in one or two demonstration regions in the world between the public and private sector who were sort of looking at each other saying we need to do something. So to step in there and bring the world's leading experts together to actually help them deliver something profoundly different. Great. And um, um, in terms of um, the demonstrate, you know, may turn, turning this into practice, what 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 will it entail? Um, yeah. Well, I, I. And one thing, when you use the word demonstrate, you need to explain. Yeah. It. No, I will. No, I'll come on and explain that. So, so basically, the idea was to focus on one or two places to pull all these ideas together, because. Can I? Not so basically the idea was, but just to say, the idea is. Yeah, okay. The, the idea is to focus uh, lots of efforts which are going on in all sorts of dimensions of change, of dealing with climate change. Focus it on one or two places in the world and bring all of those ideas together into an integrated set of interventions and working with communities to actually dramatically improve Uh, water, energy and food security, uh, resource efficiency, um, closing resource loops locally to actually enable people to grow their own food, turn waste into something useful, uh, into a resource, uh, manage water better um, and actually show that it is possible to have a factor four or five improvement in resource efficiency compared with what we're doing at the moment. Um, And I decided it would be very sensible to do that in the world's fastest growing economies, so to do it in a, in a location in India, to do it in a location in China, and do it in a location in Africa at the same time, sharing knowledge between one and the other. But clearly the most important thing is it has to be something that's done on the ground. It's not a top-down strategy, it's something to work with people and, and really uh, enable everyone in those countries to and, and those continents to see that something is possible is different. So the next step was um, and then um, um, yeah then you can uh, maybe tell about the step in India in terms yes. of uh, working with uh, with this yeah. in India and um, uh, both both for people in India but also for people Uh, can be in Denmark and elsewhere in the world who, who may be interested in, in yeah. bilaterals or whatever. So the next step in in what I've done in the last year is to actually work out where we should go in the, in these uh, continents. And my idea was to go somewhere where there was regional leadership, where there was community leadership and interest in ch making change happen. So that it was most likely to be successful. So it's going to the places where actually I believed there was enough energy and all work already going on that would actually enable us to support that and, and lead to success. So the locations that we have been working with and have now identified are the city of Surat in India, uh, the region of Chongming Island in Shanghai in China, and the city of Kigali in Rwanda in Africa. And so we're now very focused on those three places and uh, we've done most work probably now in India to actually help uh, Surat to understand how to move this forward and engaging the corporate community in India and also the art and culture community in India to support the process of helping the community to understand the change process and maybe to establish a level of trust with them. 
this one links fine to the previous one, but if we wanted to have this on its own, mm. could you just talk about Surat yeah. and say, in Surat what we're doing is... Yes, yeah, okay. In Surat, what we plan to do is to uh, work with the city authorities, with the Chamber of Commerce and the business community, and with the community representatives, to actually uh, work with them to sort of vision and understand what's possible in terms of change, in terms of closing loops and managing resources better and improving the economy and making it more resilient. Um, and at the same time to build a model for them of the city and the way it performs that can be used to fashion different intervention strategies, different investments, different land use arrangements, better transport systems, water management, flood prevention and provide a model to the city to enable the community there to actually determine the right strategies for their future and understand how to get investments to drive it. Um, so we're planning to do those two things in parallel over the next year. For, for the business community the uh, idea is to, with this model and this investment strategy, is to enable them to uh, develop a business strategy for investment in the region which will enable them to have a higher return on capital to deepen the benefits to the community around their activity and to uh, enable their business operations to improve in the environment uh, to actually improve resource efficiency and to create partnerships with other businesses to make the whole business environment there more more resilient and more sustainable and not so sub not so uh, affected by global shocks as it is at the moment and yeah and, and and how can a bilateral program for instance the danish um, I, uh, indian uh, fit in into working um, with rot and what's the yeah What's the benefits of that? Well, basically, the uh, most large businesses in India already have connections into other countries in the world, like Denmark. And so the idea of, of bilateral relationships between countries means that there can be a lot of technology sharing, a lot of uh, cultural sharing, a lot of uh, common interest in actually developing these ideas. Because in my model, the the ideas that we develop here will be relevant in, in, in Europe, in Denmark. The ideas that are being tested in Denmark will be relevant in India. So by having the bilateral relationships and, and rooted in art and culture as well, with the trust issue being very important, one can get this whole mix to work for mutual advantage. And in terms of business, what be the uh, potentials? Well, clearly for Danish businesses, there can be business opportunities in very rapidly emerging markets like uh, like India. But also, I think there is an, uh, it will develop an understanding of what the circular economy means, because India really needs to develop more of a circular economy, of a resource-efficient economy. And this is, a, this is an approach for Europe's growth, in my view, that Europe can only really grow now using a circular economy of improving resource efficiency and using more renewables. And, and that is a direction that, that is profoundly important for Europe's investment and economy as well.